Hi Year 10, hope you're doing all right and are staying indoors. Um, well done for those notes you made on Half-Life uh, today. Today? Yes, today. Um, some of you have sent those through to me, you didn't need to, but at least it gives me some indication that you're doing it. And um, well done for those of you who have done your Fission and Fusion quiz, they were very good. Um, I was going to talk to you a little bit through the Half-Life stuff, because it's something that you people often get tripped up on. Um, the key thing with Half-Life is to remember it is the time taken for the substance to halve. Now, obviously, that makes, I mean, I know that sounds really obvious, um, but obviously if you've got, start with 100, halving takes you down to 50 and halving again takes you to 25. So the key idea is that you're not going down by the same amount every time. It's going to be different every time. Um, you're going to start with the greatest decrease and then as time goes on, your decreases are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So half-life is the time it takes for your radioactive sample to halve. But obviously, practically, you can't really measure that because you can't go into your sample with a microscope and count up how many nuclei haven't decayed yet because by the time you finish counting, loads of them would have decayed and your answer would be different. Um, so instead of that, what we do is we count... Um, we count the activity, so we count the number of decays per second. So it becomes half-life is the time it takes for the activity of your radioactive sample to halve. So if you started by getting a reading, so you had your Geiger counter, if you started by getting a reading of 100 counts per second, your half-life would be the length of time it took to go down to 50 counts per second. And that is a rule for, it doesn't matter um, what um, element you're investigating, all radioactive samples are going to decay with constant half-life. Okay, it's one of our, um, just, you know, one of the rules of radioactivity. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to take you over to the textbook. Let's look at the graph. You will have seen this graph when you... Is that right? Oh, no, I need to... Fl oh, yeah, yeah, that is right, because I'll flip it afterwards. Um, you will have seen this graph when you did your own notes. Oh, my gosh, I can't get it steady. This is going to be a nightmare. So, as time goes along the bottom, you can see that every time here, 50 seconds goes past, the count rate halves. So, it starts by going by 40 to 20 and we go along and we see that took 50 seconds. Then we go from 20 to 10, and we see again that took another 50 seconds between 50 and 100. So we're now at two half lives. Um, and then after another 50 seconds, that is three half lives. So the substance has halved three times. It's halved once from 40 to 20, once from 20 to 10, and once from 10 to 5. Um, and it will keep going in that pattern. So when you're doing questions about half-life, which I'm about to ask you to do, um, when you're doing questions about half-life, I would literally write it out. I'd say, this is how much I start with after one half-life, which is this amount of time, it goes down to this amount. After two half-lives, which is this amount of time, it goes down to this amount. And literally, I would list them down below. If you're really, really good at maths, you can go down an exponential route and you can say, you can start with your sample. So this is not gonna be for everyone. But if you started with your sample of say, um, 200, if you wanted to know um, how, many, how much there is left after a certain number of half lives, um, you are going to times it by a half to the power of that number of half lives. So, for example, after one half life, you're going to have 200 times half to the power of one, which is 200 times a half. So, 100. After two half lives, you're going to have 200 times a half to the power of two, which is 200 times a quarter, which is 50. And you can see there, 200 is halved once to get down to 100, and it's halved again to get down to 50. Um, obviously, you'll have a calculator with you in the exam. So for example, if they said, you start with 200, and you're gonna go down um, five half-lifes, and then the question says, how much of the sample is left after five half-lifes? You can go, oh, it's easy peasy, 200 times 
a half to the power of five. And remember that is all that is all one bit. The half to the power of five almost needs to go in brackets to keep it protected on your calculator so it doesn't get confused with other things. Um, and you're gonna get, I don't have that on me. Um, that is two half lives, three half lives, 50, uh, 25, four half lives, 12.5. So we're gonna go down to 6.25. I think that's right. You can check that for me on your calculators. Um, but hopefully that gives you a little um, overview of half-life. If you're in doubt, just, if in doubt, literally just treat it like a logic problem and write out your steps for each half-life going down the page. Um, and let me know if you have any problems with the questions I'm about to set. Bye.